Now, with 11 hours of a hard-won ceasefire left to go, there's no sign of a plan to secure a longer period of calm. A month on from the start of this latest Israeli offensive, Palestinians in the Gaza Strip have no idea when or how they'll be able to rebuild their lives. And a senior member of Hamas's military wing tells Al Jazeera it will resume rocket attacks from 0500 GMT on Friday if its demands are not met. And it wants a permanent lifting of the blockade and a fully functioning port. Delegates from both sides plus international mediators are discussing a diplomatic solution through indirect talks in Egypt. And while the talks to hammer out a deal go on in Cairo, Israel's media reports the government has offered to extend the ceasefire for another 72 hours. Well, a month on, this is the human cost of the violence. 64 Israeli soldiers and three civilians, including a Thai national, have been killed since the fighting started a month ago. Gaza's health ministry says 1,886 Palestinians have been killed. The UN says almost three quarters of them are civilians. More than 9,500 Palestinians have been wounded and more than 180,000 people are still living in 90 UN shelters. Well, let's look back at the events of the last month. <laughs> Israeli bombs shake the earth. This one landed just 300 feet away from us. And the aftermath? This rubble was once the house of Gaza's police chief. He survived the assault, but many members of his family were killed. A warning rocket from an Israeli drone strikes the roof. Then this. The last Egyptian brokered ceasefire, it seems, wasn't properly negotiated with Hamas. This is the shack where uh, the two strikes came in, where the boys were playing. There's no country in the world, no country in the world that would tolerate such an assault on its citizens. And Israel should not be expected to either. Israel says it's targeting armed fighters and their underground tunnel network. But we see heartbreak and despair here. It's a hell of a pinpoint operation. It's a hell of a pinpoint operation. Thousands fled to the Shifa hospital courtyard because they thought it was the only place safe from Israeli bombs. This is a genocide. This is a massacre. People here are asking the question, why does Israel target a UN school that they know shelters civilians? Parts of Shejayir neighborhood are in ruins. This entire neighborhood has been destroyed. And buried beneath the rubble are the homes and lives of countless Palestinians. Israel will destroy the tunnels we have found, and we will not stop until that job is done. Children and babies were among the victims of this conflict again. Are these the human shields Israel accuses Hamas of using to protect their tunnels? <laughs> Soldier deaths going to the heart of the Israeli psyche. These men are considered heroes. There's been tank shelling around this power station for days, and now it's taken another direct hit. But trying to repair this could take months. It's not the first time a United Nations school full of displaced people has been hit. Nothing is more shameful than attacking sleeping children. The announcement of the ceasefire turned out to be just that, words. Have you used artillery shells in densely populated parts of, of Gaza? Of course we have. <laughs> We vigorously condemned this attack because we had notified the Israeli army 33 times about the fact that there were people at this shelter, this school. With Tuesday's withdrawal of Israel's ground forces from the Gaza Strip, this is the first time he's seen his home since Israeli forces ordered him to leave more than three weeks ago.